Hi everyone, welcome to Code Conversations from the .NET Foundation. I'm Maria Nagaga and I'm here with Jas Baga who is a software engineer on the ASP.NET MVC team, correct? That's right. I'm so excited to have you. I'm so happy to be here. And you're going to be talking about something called Tag Helper Components. That's right, yeah. And Tag Helpers are something I don't really know that much about, mm -hmm. but I'm so excited that you are here because you can show me how to use them properly. Yes, sure. All okay, right. let's get started then. So Tag Helper Components are related to Tag Helpers, and before we get started, we can just have a little review of what Tag Helpers are. And if you have any questions throughout this video, please feel free to tweet at me at Baga Jaspreet, and I'll try to answer your questions. All right, so you are going to show us a... So tag helpers are a way to target HTML elements and have C-sharp code run on them. So for instance, if you were to look at this environment tag helper, it will render different links based on which environment you're in. You could be in development or staging or production, and it will render different links based on that. OK, yeah. which is great for testing, right? Yeah, yeah. And the code behind this is in C-sharp and can be found in our GitHub repo on MVC. Um, and if you just look for environment tag helpers, you can see what it actually does. It looks at what environment you're in, and if oh, you- Oh, could you zoom in that a little bit? Okay. Control plus. Oh. Yeah, there we go. All right. So if you are in the right environment, it will return the tag helper, but if you're not, it will suppress the output. So all the logic can be written in C-sharp with all the possibilities of C-sharp, and you can target HTML elements. And okay. if you want to learn more about Tag Helpers, you could check out all the other ones that we have here. You can check out the implementations of these, or you could look at our docs at docs.microsoft.com. We have tutorials, walkthroughs, or you could also watch videos by Taylor Mullen um, on Channel 9 or YouTube, and he goes over exactly what you need to do to get started with Tag Helpers. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Great resources. Awesome. OK, so but today I'm going to talk about Tag Helper components. And they are related to Tag Helpers, but they're a little bit different. So they will allow you to modify HTML elements. And let's say you want to insert a certain JavaScript throughout your application yeah. in a certain head or body tag. You don't need to go into every view and change it. You can just write a C Sharp file and say, please link this up to my app, and that will take care of it. Tag Helper Components will go into each of your views and add that HTML to your files. That sounds pretty smooth. Yeah. So let's get started. So let's look at the index file. I'll clean it up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. OK, cool. Let's add a head tag, and let's also add a body tag. All right, and let's say you wanted some script here. OK. OK, so let's say I want this inserted. Let's say I want the console to say the time at the server. OK, cool. OK, so using tag helpers, we can just add a new code file. And we're going to call it my tag helper. Actually, let's rename it to my tag helper component because that would make it clear. Yeah. My tag helper component, let's rename it. And this derives from our base class tag helper component tag helper. And our file doesn't know about it yet, but we'll add that using and that should take care of it. Okay. Um, and here, uh, it's complaining because we haven't implemented it yet. So oh, okay. let's say, let's give it an order. So this is important when you have multiple tag helper components. The order decides how, in which order you modify your HTML element. So let's say I want it to have multiple components inside of my body tag. Um, this order would decide when each is rendered. So now we can say, let's add. A process method. Okay. This is what actually does the magic here. Let's resolve these. Here, um, you, we're finding all the tags that are body tags, yeah. and we're going to append some HTML to the output. OK, cool. Kay. So let's say we want this guy to be rendered. So we don't need to put it in our index file anymore. We can just go into our tag helper component and 
have those in here. Oh, that way you don't have to include it to every single body tag that exists. Y yeah, and you can target all of them with this. That's oh. really cool. OK, so this is actually tag of the component. And that should fix it. Awesome. So now we have a tag helper component that can target all body tags. You can be specific, too. You can say, I want just one body tag to have this component inserted into. And you can use any of the different properties inside your output tag. And you can look at any of these. Um, a, ni a nice way to do it would be to look into the attributes and look for a certain one that you've added to your tag. Oh, okay. So let's say you want to add contains name and just insert an attribute that you want. Let's call it inject for now and have that inserted in here. So if you did this, now it will look for all the body tags with this attribute and only modify those. Oh, okay. So this is a way to be specific. But let's let's be let's have it globally inserted for now. So you can actually have specific um, attributes towards particular body tags mm -hmm. in your project. Okay. Yeah, so if, let's say you wanted to modify each of your body tag differently. You could use this um, um, concept of having an attribute of a certain name. And if it corresponds, if it satisfies both of these conditions, only then will the only then the HTML will be modified. OK, cool. So for now, let's just keep it global and see if it um, changes all of our body tags. So now we have a tag helper component, but our application doesn't know about it. So we can go into our startup file, and we can register it as a service in our service collection. So, so we're configuring it to our pipeline. Exactly. We're okay. going to look at the configure services method. And in here, just like we're adding MVC, we're going to add a service, services.addTransition. And itag helper component is the, uh, is the interface that tag helper component implements. And this is the tag helper component that we wrote. So now our app knows about this tag helper component. And everything is set up. That's all you need to do. Let's see if that works. OK, cool. So our script wants to write to the console. So F12 would take us here. And there we go. Oh, there's the time. Yeah, and it's printed twice because we have two body tags, one's in our index page and one's in our layout page. And this actually shows how you didn't have to edit it everywhere. Exactly. Perfect. So insert it globally. Let's look at the code very quickly. So if you put press Control u it's in here. You can see the script is inserted in our body tag right here. And this body tag was a part of the layout, and it's inserted in here as well. Oh, cool. Yep. So without you having to manually edit each view, you can just add a C Sharp file and have it do it for you. Oh, cool. So you showed us how to use it in the, so you've just showed us how to use it in the body, right? Where else can we use Tag Helper components? That's a great question. So right now, MVC will ship with the head Tag Helper and a body Tag Helper, and you can modify both of those. OK, cool. But you can also write your own. Oh, so I'm not restricted. You're not restricted. You can basically uh, do it for any HTML element you want. Like, I could show you one for how to do it for footers. OK, that's cool. Let's, yeah. let's save that for our next video. Yeah. So in this video, we had a great introduction to Tag Helper components. In our next video, let's have a look at how we make them.